The defensive end position, how would you characterize where it's at and the progress you've made? Uh, first word that came to my head was deep, um, diverse. I mean, I think we've got uh, a good mixture of, of younger guys that are extraordinarily talented. I mean, we just hit absolute grand slam with the, the class of defensive ends a couple of years ago with uh, with Chidi Obiazer. Jordan Allen and Ryan Davis. I mean, all three of those guys, I think, are going to be stars in this program. I, I don't, I'm not bashful about saying that. And then when you combine those guys with uh, the Cody Stuffelbeans, the uh, Brendan Motts, the guys that have some experience at that position, I'm really excited about where that's at. And and we're trying to find ways to um, maybe get more of those guys involved in what we're doing um, because that room is going to be one of our more talented rooms on defense for sure. The, the linebacker spot because you have multiple guys recovering and then um, you probably have guys that you're giving rest to this spring as well that have taken a lot of snaps. So how's that look? Yeah, that's, you know, spring is about evaluation and it's about experimentation. And so we're uh, we're trying to find those guys and we are trying to push some guys uh, up with the, with, the, with the ones. You know, we're trying to get Austin Romaine to realize that he's not a young guy anymore, that he's an old guy. And I think he's doing a great job with that. We are trying to stress Austin more by having him learn more than one position. Um, at the same time, there are guys like Cam Salas, um, Rex Van Wy, uh, guys like that that are, that are potentially going to find themselves in the mix um, to a much greater degree that, you know, we're, we're trying to see if, if those guys are, is it worth taking somebody else off the field to put them on? You know, and, and so it's a huge evaluation time for those guys. So it's it hasn't slowed us down in what we're trying to do. I think all those guys understand what they're doing. Coach Stanner does a nice job with that uh, in that room. It's just uh, can we get those guys to play at varsity speed? Um, and, and that's that's where that's where uh, we've been making a ton of hay, I think, this this week in particular. With uh, Uso Sayamalo limited during spring, is that – advantageous for you at nose tackle how does that position kind of look are you guys a little light in numbers there yeah we are a little light in, in numbers there I don't I don't think it's advantageous for us because I think he needs the reps um you know it's crazy to think that Uso was a dang you know not that long ago he was an offensive skill guy you know and uh and, and he's still green in his position and he knows that and and he could use all the time uh in the helmet that that he could get but it's the hand that we're dealt. And so in the meantime, the, the, the benefits of that is we're getting a great opportunity to evaluate Asher Tomaszewski. You know, we're getting a great time to evaluate Titus Tuiasasopo, George Tralia. You know, I feel pretty comfortable with Damian Alalio in there at nose. Um, we've moved Javon Banks in and out of there. He's played some end and played some nose for us. Um, so we, we, we can make it work numbers-wise, but, um, man, there's just no substitution for reps. And so uh, some guys, Austin Moores, guys like that come to my mind that played so much football that you can probably get away with lightening their load a little bit. I don't know if Uso's quite to that degree yet. Uh, he's just still a heck of a football player, but I think there's still some things technically that can make him better that he's missing out on right now. That, uh, From what I understand, we're going to be able to get him back in a limited role here toward the end of spring, uh, even if it's just individual and stuff. I think that time with Coach Trias Sopo is going to be huge for him. It would seem that you're invariably going to need some young guys to step into the four at safety. Who would that be? Uh, we saw Wesley Fair a little bit yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mikey Bergeron, who are some of those names? Yeah. Jack Fabris has been unbelievable. I think he's had a, a really good spring. Uh, Wesley Fair has had a really good spring. Both of those guys way above and beyond what we thought they were going to be relative to where they left off in the fall. Uh, we bolstered that position quite a bit, I think, with the addition of Jordan Riley. Um, he's come in and, and just seamlessly fit into what we do. Um, he's going to be a major part of who we will be next fall. Marquis Siegel has been as good as anybody in the country. I, re I really believe that. Um, you know, we're down VJ Payne and Colby McAllister. I think those guys will play big parts for us in the spring, too. So when you, when you tally up all those guys, and I, I know. Uh, as you mentioned, Mikey Bergeron. I mean, there there are there are others. Um, Kendra Steiger's had a great spring. Daniel Cobbs has been in and out with some some nagging little injuries. Um, but we we have as uh, much like the defensive end room. I think that's going to be a fairly deep room for us that we got to find ways to utilize those guys to the best skill sets. 
Joe, with the talent you do have up front, could you see yourself experimenting or going back and forth between four and three man fronts next season? <laughs> yeah, that's that's hard to do. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you guys the story of the of the Stanford game. You know, it was a four down background, and and you know, long story. But why we why we decided to do what we're doing with, with the three down front. But then, you know, that first uh, game that we were going to play was was Stanford. You know, and back then Stanford was thirty two personnel Stanford, right, and going to ram it down your throats. And so, conventional wisdom would tell you that's the worst time to go to a three down and see if it works or not. And uh, so we kind of had in the back of our head, this stuff doesn't work, man. We're scrapping it and getting back to that four down stuff is lickety split. And, you know, played our, our butts off that day and, and the rest was history. But for a long period of time there, we were practicing three down and four down football. And the principles of it and the spacing of it are just two different worlds. It's really hard to go back and forth. Um, so I guess in my mind, it's not so much – you know, are we going to play four down stuff as much as it is? How can we utilize maybe uh, another defensive end type body into what we're already doing? And, and how can we, um, in that way, get our best 11 people on the field consistently? So I don't know if it'll change our, our um, nuts and bolts structure all that much, but just how can we, um, how can we find more creative ways to, uh, to do different things with our best people? I don't know if that answers your question that clearly, but that's kind of where my head's at with it. No, you did a good job. Uh, I also want to ask, with, with Keenan, has he come to – has he um, mastered his position well enough yet that he's a guy you can just, you know, rely on, be a steady Eddie kind of the guy you refer to from yes. time to time? Yeah, so much more confident than what he was. Even – I think where he started to gain confidence, and I don't know if it was perceptible or not, but right around uh, the Houston game last year, right around that time was where he realized – I can challenge anybody. I, I can play with these guys. I can run with these guys. I can, you know, I can out technique these guys. I understand what I'm doing well enough where I can know where I can take risks and where I need to avoid risks. And um, he didn't have that the first half of last season. And I think toward the end of last season, you didn't hear his name very much because he was doing his job. And, and I think he is, um, he's as valuable of a returner as, as we've had, you know, the fact that he's going to come back and play his final year here is a huge, huge deal for this program. And, um, so yeah, I think he's, he's exponentially grown. Just the amount of young guys we were playing last year in their first year that were kind of getting by, uh, I don't want to say on, on false confidence, cause that's not true, but they just weren't still quite sure they were just playing. And I think some of those guys, the Colby McAllisters, the you know guys like that that just come to my mind that were young players last year that are so much better, so, such such a different place right now mentally. Uh, Keenan being one of those, even though he's a you know an older player, I think he's just in a different spot mentally right now, confidence wise, than what he was even in November last year. Um, go through some of the depth though that's developed at corner. Yeah, so. Uh, <clears throat> I'm very pleased with, you know, uh, Jacob Parrish and, and Keenan Garber have been uh, have been exceptional. They've been difference makers. Um, as good of a duo as there will be in this league. Um, and I think we feel so much better about what's behind them right now. Justice James has been great. Um, same kind of deal. You know, Justice, early to middle part of last year, he was just getting by on – his instincts and his ability. I think right now he's he's just anticipating, seeing things, uh, recognizing formations. Just you know, totally different headspace. Uh, Kanigel Thomas, I'm very excited about. Um, you know, as a, as a freshman last year, we we moved him in and out of some special teams roles. Never got significant time on defense. Um, extremely athletic, extremely competitive, physical, can run. I mean, he's going to be another one that will. Be a, be a big player here in the future. Um, Donovan McIntosh is improving. Um, Tyler Nalone was someone we were excited to see. He's had some some injury problems this spring, um, but but he'll be a part of that mix. Um, Darrell Jones has been back healthy. He hadn't been healthy for two years, so seeing him uh, is impressive. So there's some there's some competition in the room that we really haven't had. Here's a modern day college football question. You just listed off a bunch of depth on the defensive side. Transfer portal opens April 15th. How worried are you? Some of those depth pieces 
you know, aren't starters might hit the portal? Yeah, great question. I, I think that uh, um, I feel very confident uh, here. You know, I feel very confident here because of the stability of the locker room, because of the stability of the program, because of the um, interconnectedness of the people within the program, um, from the head coach to the strength coach to, you know, the position coaches, um, to the players in, in themselves in the locker room. I, I, I would be surprised if we lost any of those depth pieces. Um, I shouldn't say that with a grain of salt because nothing surprises me anymore. But uh, I, I really would. And, and I think that you have to be mindful, too, that different people are in different places in their career. Um, Kanigel Thomas um, should not be upset if he's in a reserve role um, <clears throat> because he's just in his second year. He's developing. This is a developmental program. I don't think we, we guised that in any way when we were recruiting these guys. I think we were upfront with them about that. Uh, we don't recruit people on the promise that they're going to come in and play right now. We recruit people on the promise that they're going to have to earn their way. And if you do earn your way, we don't care if you're a freshman or senior. You're going to play. And um, I think that because of the honest feedback that we constantly provide them, which is a huge, hugely valuable piece, I think people really understand where they are in the program. So it's not you're not catching them off guard when there are two. Or when they're you know when they're playing limited reps in a game because they understand that's where they are in the program, and it doesn't mean they're any less valuable to the program. It just means that that's where they're at currently. A guy like Kanigel Thomas is a great example. I think he's going to be a multi-year starter here. I wouldn't be surprised if he's an all-conference guy by the time he's done. Right now, is he better than Jacob Parrish? Probably not. You know, and so I think he understands that. I think uh, we've been clear about that and. We're going to get him ready every week like he's going to play 80 plays. And he may play 80 and he may play 18. Uh, that That's kind of how <laughs> the games go. But, uh, um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be surprised. I, I, I think we've got a pretty stable situation down there. Well, let's flip the portal the other way. Uh, I assume because you lost literally a big piece of your recruiting class that was going to be an interior defensive lineman at least part of the time that the portal might be an area that you're going to explore for that here once it opens? Yeah, we're, we're looking at a, a few different options right now. I think we could win football games with what we have right now. If history has taught us anything, it's that, uh, you know, Murphy's Law is always knocking on the door. And, and so, um, you know, we thought linebacker was our deepest position last year. We played the last four games of the season with three linebackers. Um, and, and so... Yeah, we're going to be uh, in the portal uh, uh, with kind of one eye open all the time, but we're not going to reach. You know, I, I don't think we need to reach. We don't need to, um, you know, we don't we don't need to replace um, at the at the behest of our development. We still want to develop guys, and we want guys. You know, we we don't ever want to become a transfer portal lean on football team. We're going to do it to supplement what we have. We're going to do it to supplement some of the depth problems that we may have. And, um, you know, we'll probably be out there looking for exactly that. What's the competition been like at the Jack safety position replacing Kobe? Yeah. So, um, you know, we played the bowl game with Colby McAllister, who's been out all, all spring. And so he's a guy that could factor into this. Um, Jack Fabris and Jordan Riley and Jet Deneen have been the three guys that have been repping that, that spot. Um, Jet Deneen has, has been exponentially better uh, as a guy that I wouldn't have mentioned in that conversation maybe in January, and he's, you know, he's doing a tremendous job. But I think those other two guys are playing at an extremely high level right now. And, um, you know, Jordan – is a guy that's played a lot of football in college. I think he really understands um, the pace of the game, his, his maturity of how he takes care of his body, uh, how he goes about his business. And Jack Fabris is just a machine in everything he does. Just you know, by the book, rigid, going to be um, you know, playing 100%. You know, coach's son that just you know grew up that way. And so I think that's a tremendous one-two punch that we've got right now, how that will ultimately sort out in the fall, I think will be something that will still play out through the summer into August. And if the, looking at the other side of the football, 
when we scrimmage and practice against the offense, it's young but has potential out of a lot of depth. Anybody has stood out from the young guys that have been a problem for your defense? Yeah, I don't want to use the word problem, but um, you know, one guy that that's impressed me a lot is Jace Brown. You know, I think Jace has made uh, leaps and bounds progress from where he was at the end of last year, and I think everybody kind of knew what Avery was going to be. Um, I think those young tight ends are developing uh, quite a bit, I, I, but I see a lot of improvement. Uh, the two guys that I, I probably see the most improvement out of, um, and, and this is just me, it, you know, the, the offensive guys might disagree, but I, I, Jace Brown and Keegan Johnson, I think are guys that are standing out to me uh, on a daily basis. Uh, VJ Payne's going into his third season. What, what, what's, what are the things that you're looking for him to do to kind of take that next step into being one of the one of the big leaders for you guys. yeah vj is a great vocal guy you know he's one of the guys that that has a good voice and is a great communicator out there for us um <clears throat> he makes he makes plays um but he doesn't always do it in the most efficient manner you know i think sometimes his body control is something that we talk uh considerably about he's a longer guy um you know, sometimes he kind of looks like a baby giraffe on the ice, you know, just kind of all over the place. And um, But then other times he's playing fast and he's real smooth and he's real comfortable. And I, I, I know he's got that in him. I know he's got that. He's a tremendous athlete. He's one of the fastest guys on our team, uh, very explosive. And so just being able to keep his body under control all the time has been the emphasis for him. It's not knowing what he's doing. He's extremely intelligent. It's, it's more just, uh, you know, how can I do that? more efficiently how can I save that foot and a half of space that sometimes we wasted a season ago Damien's now kind of the, the, the old man in, in in that room what uh <laughs> that's crazy what, what, what what's kind of the steps that you've seen him take from from last season to this spring you know he he's grown so much that I think even a year ago he was um he was still getting used to carrying some of that weight. You know, he's not a big framed guy the way that Uso is and some of those guys at that position can be. Um, so for him to go from, you know, mid 280s to 305 was was a deal for him a little bit. And so, I don't know, in some way, I, I, I suppose it hampered his movements. Um, and he just looks so much more athletic, I think, right now. You know, I see him getting off the ball. I see him coming out of his hips. Um, you know, he, he, he's another one that's extremely intelligent, just really understands what we're doing and how we're doing it. And so um, that's not been the issue with him. It's just how can we make him, just like BJ, a more efficient football player? Technique things. Hey, Joe. Um, basic question, just broad-based. What do you like best about the defense right now? <clears throat> um, I think guys are buying into what we're selling. You know, and uh, I guess the best way I can I can say this is a year ago at this time, we leaned really heavily on Daniel Green. He was the alpha male. He was the leader. Um, and week three shows up, and we don't have Daniel Green anymore. And, and to watch Austin Moore take that onus of leadership on – almost single-handedly last year, and I'm not saying other guys didn't contribute, but he, he really took the mantle when, when that happened and, and tried to lead. And there were a lot of guys that really weren't sure how to respond to that. I think the leadership is so much more spread out right now. You know, I see it in every position group. You mentioned Damian Olalio, tremendous leader. Brendan Mott, tremendous leader. Uh, Jacob Parrish, tremendous leader. Um, Marquis Siegel, tremendous leader. Guys that can pile on to the messaging that is hadn't coming down from Coach Kleiman to myself to Austin Moore to you know across the defense, and that's the uh, that's probably the biggest difference is the maturity level, not of the top guys, but the maturity level of that next tier of guys that are going to be major major contributors for us, and so <clears throat> how that messaging of effort and getting after the football and finishing plays and communication, how that's getting through to guys right now is probably what I'm most excited about. It's, it's always being preached. It's always being talked about. Uh, it's on the leaders to make sure that that never becomes, that those never become back burner issues. You know, that those are always, man, if we didn't communicate well enough, 
there's a standard that we set and and we're holding each other to that standard a year ago i don't know if we did that at, at consistently enough to be a championship defense so i'm excited about that right now how many practices have you had so far and from beginning to where you are now where has the most improvement come from um you know the defensive end room i would say and the only reason I say that is is just because there are some extraordinarily talented kids. Um, you know, we moved Toby Austin Sanmi down there. That's another guy that we didn't talk about a second ago. Um, Jordan Allen, Chidi Oviazo, those guys uh, that hadn't had hardly any experience doing what they're doing right now um, were just chickens with their head cut off day one that now are turning into consistent playmakers, guys that, that flash – not just do their job, but flash consistently throughout practice. I was going to ask a little bit about that position, too, based on what you said about the young guys. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm curious as to what it means to have Stufflebean and Mott back to help those guys, and yet with their roles. I, I don't know if you were expecting both to come back, but that seems like an awfully big deal to me. Yeah, in December, we really didn't know how all that was going to shake out. You know, and, and we were preparing for um, uh, for whatever, and I knew that we could ha handle whatever. The program is strong enough to handle whatever, but to have those guys back, um, that, that that's such a big deal. Uh, again, to, 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 to pile on the leadership that Coach Wyatt gives those guys. You know, it, it, Coach Wyatt can scream until he's blue in the face, and often does. Um, but, uh, you know, to, to have Brendan Mott pull you aside and say something – I think is is maybe more impactful, and and so uh, that those guys that have played significant snaps in this program and meaningful snaps and championship snaps, um, when he tells me something, I'm, I'm all ears, and so that's been the world for for not only those young guys but you know another guy that that I should mention I'd be remiss if I didn't is Travis Bates, you know Travis is another transfer like Jordan Riley that came in here and has been lights out. I mean from the minute he stepped out there. In winter conditioning, we knew that this was a wildcat. You know, the way he goes about his business, how he takes care of his body, how he plays uh, practice after practice, he's going to be a, a significant contributor for us also. The guy I was going to ask about next, but since you touched on that, I'll go back to Cam. Do you see him being um, somebody that can play multiple positions, or is your preference now because of his youth to, to kind of keep him in one spot? You talk, Cam Salas? Yes. Yeah. I think we're going we're gonna, to uh, keep him at linebacker right now. Uh, a, because of the depth of our safety room. And B, you know, his body is, is so thick. I mean, he's going to be a much bigger guy than what he is right now. And he came in as a big-bodied safety, which was kind of what we were thinking. And he is – he's, you know, one of the faster kids on our football team. So, it, I mean, he has the athletic ability to play safety. But I just think um, – Six months from now, he might be 222, and he's just he's going to look a little different than the guys in the safety room. Yeah, his mentorship was was huge, not for not for a guy like Austin who he spent that much time with, but for a guy like Austin Romain who was just stepping into playing a significant amount of snaps, a guy like Asa Newsom, a guy like Jake Clifton, those guys that were, um, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say they, they just didn't know. You know, they weren't, they weren't scared to, to go out there and perform. They just they had no idea what they were getting into being the Mike backer of this program week after week. And so just his calming presence I think was good, not just for those guys but for, but for everybody. And so um, – be forever grateful to that guy for what he, his contribution, even even when he wasn't playing. Is there a timetable for Asa Newsom? Uh, Saw him uh, out my my window yesterday, working with the trainers, um, you know, doing his rehab stuff, and, and it appeared to me that he was running uh, linear, pretty close to full speed. So um, you know, there's still quite a bit of time between you know that and being ready to go, but. I think that that's a really encouraging sign without any movement issues appeared to me. Um, you know, I think the next step in that is you know, change direction and, you know, um, and then you got to consistently do it. I think our hope for him is that, that he gets a full summer 
you know, June and July and uh, has no impairments come August 1st.